is Meiju. Welcome to watch my knitting podcast. Um, if you're new to my channel, um, I live in Helsinki. Uh, I design knitwear. I have been making uh, knitting patterns over 10 years now. And I have had this podcast over one year, almost two years already, because I started just before the corona situation bursted. So, so anyway, welcome to watch my podcast. Um, some of you might know that I have been making a knitting book past, uh, past year and um, I have been really busy with that book and during the bookmaking process I always tried to make videos of my week, what I have been doing and so on. I, I, I almost was able to make one video within a week but now uh, the past month have been really busy for me. I have some other, other jobs that I have, have to do so I don't knit all the time. <laughs> So that's why I have been so busy. I have had um, uh, other duties and other stuff that I have been uh, doing. Um, uh, this episode will be somewhat different than my previous episode since I, I two weeks ago I, I was staying in, in my uh, temporary workspace. I have one workspace that I'm using now until the Christmas time. Uh, a couple of days in a month and uh, I was uh, making a video. I, actually I recorded a video there two weeks ago but then I got so busy that, that I wasn't able to edit that uh, at all. So I'm putting uh, that, uh, the, that video here so I, I'm editing it uh, here and after you have watched it I'm going to show you some of my finished uh, objects here that are going to be, be published soon. They are not yet published and uh, I'm going to also show you my work in progresses. I have two of them here and then I'm going to say a few words about my sweater that I'm wearing now. I published it two days ago and um, yeah I will put uh, the uh, previously recorded uh, footage here and uh, then we'll talk about more about my two days of photo shooting my book too at the end of this episode. Hello! Where is my knitting? <laughs> it's here. <laughs> okay, hello. My name is May. You welcome to watch my knitting. Um, Podcast. In this video I am going to talk about what I'm knitting now, what I have my, on my hands, a few words about my shawl and uh, then I have uh, this canola pullover that I published last week. I'm going to talk about a few words about that. Um, um, thank you for joining, my, uh, joining me to watch this video. I'm at the moment I'm at the city center of Helsinki on my temporary workspace that I have rented, co-rented with my, uh, with this group of ladies that we have. I'm uh, usually staying here a few days in a month and uh, this um, contract is being continued in the end of December. So. Now I'm uh, currently staying here a few days and uh, actually my kids are going to join me um, this evening here uh, because my husband, husband has uh, something else to do. So we are going to have a city uh, staycation uh, today. Um, and tonight we are leaving tomorrow uh, back back to home. Um, I am my yarns just got tangled. Mm, what I'm wearing now is my shawl. This is called Softly Together Shawl. This was my last year's. Oh dear. My 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 uh, yarn yarn is cut now. 
Um, I'm going to say a few words about this yarn too uh, in a minute because I'm currently working with this so you will hear about that more. Um, yes, about my shawl. Um, this is a softly together shawl. This was my mystery knit along shawl uh, two years ago, 2020 if I recall it right. I, I I didn't organize uh, a mystery knit along this year because I was uh, writing my book I, and I did feel that I don't have time to do that because I usually, um, uh, well, I have only organized two mystery knit alongs so far. So uh, they have all been in May, so I have kind of thought that that's the best time in a year for me to organize that. Um, so this shawl has my favorite colors as you can see. I'm currently wearing a similar colored uh, uh, t-shirt. Um, the yarn is wool me once fibers um, uh, wool. Um, they are hand dyed wool. The, uh, uh, Laura, who is behind the wool me once fibers, is dyeing uh, the yarn in uh, Kokkola, uh, in the kind of uh, middle coast part of Finland. And um, uh, I love this wool. I have worn it so much because the colors are something that go with everything that I have in my wardrobe. So that's why I, ha I have it again and because I have so um, little things with here with me I have only my uh, little suitcase with me with my clothes for a few days I took this shawl and I also have this one because I wanted to talk about this uh, so it's my favorite shawl that's why I have it here and um, I'm currently yeah uh, no I'm not going to talk about this yet. I'm going to show you this uh, canal pullover, pullover that I published last week. Mm, I have shown you this before I think because I have, I if I remember it right, I have worn this in one episode <laughs> uh, when I was, I think I was in that previous rented workspace if I remember it right, but my I'm old, my friends are playing tricks with me, so I'm, I can't be sure. But um, yes, this is canola pullover. It's simple raglan sleeved pullover. It started from the top down. And then there is this um, Estonian braid that I uh, have tutorial on my YouTube channel here. You can find it here. And um, there is this cable panel in front and the neck detail. Um, the story behind this sweater is that um, one of my uh, sample knitter friends who uh, actually knit this sweater, but she didn't um, knit, uh, knit the neckline because I was thinking about uh, making a larger turtleneck collar, but I was still hesitating uh, because I would have had yarn, enough yarn to make a large, large turtleneck, but then again I felt that I wanted to try something else and um, I decided that I would do that Estonian braid there. So, uh, see delivered uh, the sweater for me and it kind of stayed <laughs> unfinished for weeks because I was waiting for inspiration what to do with the neckline and then I decided to do this uh, Estonian braid which is really nice it makes really nice nice etching between ribbing and uh, the, the stockinette stitch bar or something else shifting in this pattern so so I'm happy about that detail that I chose. Um, I could say a few words about also about this 
uh, bind off because the neckline is uh, worked last. I I did this tubular bind off and um, you can actually find also two kinds of bind offs on my channel of tubular bind off or Italian bind off uh, as some uh, may call it. Um, actually this is the bind off that I have here on my neck it's tubular bind off and this that I have here on my sleeves is Italian bind off. So but some of may call it tubular bind off too. But actually in this bind off there is an actual tube knit uh, for this bind off. So that makes that this bind off is not that stretchy as uh, most Italian bind off or Italian bind off is uh, that you might call also tubular bind off. Because as you can see here I have the Italian bind off and it's much more stretchier as you can see. This doesn't stretch that much. And the tubular bind off might, might be too stretchy if you only work Italian bind off. It's good in places when you want to a uh, fabric uh, to be stretchy and uh, and I usually also only use Italian bind off for example cuffs if I want to pull my cuffs up or um, make sure that I the it stretches if not enough I do Italian bind off but if I want the bind off to be not too stretchy, I will use the tubular bind off in which I make this double knitting that will make a tube, kind of tube here, and uh, they, uh, they will give this edging that it's, it isn't that stretchy that the normal Italian bind off. I could put links of these uh, tutorials here above or, or, or and or below this video in the description box so you will find those. But I will recommend that if you do tubular bind off for the neckline it will be the, uh, the one with double knitting or the real tube knit in it. So it will be nicer. I also have tubular cast on and I usually when I do tubular cast on I'm doing the tube in that so it's not the regular Italian bind off even though the stitches will go as they go in Italian bind off too. So it's kind of a Kitchener stitch but it's in ribbing so the stitches go the same way but they have the tube in it so that's why I do that kind of tube, tube kind of tubular cast on when I do tubular cast on because it doesn't uh, make that stretchy finished result. This is my canola pullover. You can find it on my Ravelry store on and on Bayhip. Okay, what I'm knitting now. I will show you it in a minute. I have two stitches to go at the end of this road. Okay, first about the yarn that I'm using. <laughs> this is the only uh, yarn that I have left and I'm a bit worry worried that do I have enough yarn to finish my um, my project or my design. I, I'm hoping so because, because this is kind of pain in the ass to rip off. It's this is um, Isaker Egosoft. I will put everything in the below this video if you don't get uh, all the information. It's, it is Isaker Egosoft and it's 56% alpaca and uh, 44% organic cotton and I purchased this yarn from um, um, uh, one uh, local yarn store when, when we were visiting um, visiting uh, Saariärvi uh, a month ago or a weeks ago. 
Um, and it's it's really nice. I, I'm using a large re, uh, 5.5 millimeter needles, which is US 9 needles, I think. And uh, so it knits up really fast with large needle. It's DK weight yarn, actually, if you look at it on Ravelry or do the uh, wrap. Per, per inch test for it, but still it knits up to really large gauge, which kind of gives you a really um, a light garments and uh, and a light result, and you don't actually need that much yarn for this. I just finished a sweater from this yarn. It only took fifty. Um, Five skeins, five balls of 50 grams, grams of yarn. Uh, the one skein is 50 grams and 125 meters. So it only took like uh, like five times 625 meters, which is kind of really um, little for a sweater of my size and it's really light it's like 250 grams and now I decided because I had three skeins left I decided that I would make of this I kind of calculated that I I only need three skeins to make a vest so that's what I'm doing now <laughs> and I just started ripping the hem ripping and I'm I tried it on I have enough length this is uh, goes now for my waist length and it's enough for a vest and um, it this is the yarn is um, a little bit annoying to knit if you are not used to knit this kind of yarn because it's so fluffy and fuzzy kind of yarn so it's um, kind of your needle might get uh, into those those into this fluffiness <laughs> but but it still knits up fast but it's kind of a pain in the ass to rip back if you have to rip back I luckily I don't didn't have to rip back that much so Everything is, go everything is going smoothly uh, for now. I'm hoping that I don't have to rip back because I want this vest to be succeeded. This will be an unisex uh, texture stitch vest. Uh, could be worn by men or women. White color shirt. It will be really nice office sweater. Okay, um, I will put some uh, footage uh, in the end of this video about my morning runs here uh, uh, near the coast of Helsinki. So you will see uh, the neighborhood of this place. Uh, thank you for watching and see you next Okay, time. welcome back. <laughs> Um, let's continue with my uh, my finished object here. So probably because I can't remember now that I'm talking to you, I can't remember what were the knits that I was working uh, on when I recorded that episode that you just watched. So probably you have seen some of them already in that clip so I was probably doing this this is my new vest that is cur currently being destined so I will uh, publish this later I it will go probably to the beginning of the next year because I'm I'm currently too busy I think of um, publishing it this uh, 
before Christmas. So it will go until the next year. It had this texture stitch pattern here. And uh, <clears throat> yeah. Then you've probably seen this one too. We haven't yet photoshooted this, but this is called Stormur, Stur Stormur Pullover. Stur Stormur means a big storm in Icelandic language. So this is um, this uh, has been inspired by the um, traditional Icelandic uh, motifs. And as you can see, there are Viking boats sailing in the sea under a big storm. So, so I have also made a kids version of this and uh, that pattern has already been published. And the largest size, sizes of that pattern might be might fit to very small uh, adult also. But this uh, version has now sizes uh, up to 5XL. And then just a regular plain simple Rocklang Boulevard. Really simple one. Uh, the yarn that I used here is Isaker uh, Ecosoft, which is a blend of alpaca, alpaca wool and cotton. And um, I haven't yet worn this much because, um, well, we haven't yet photoshooted this, so I, I want to keep my knits all really intact before they are being photoshoot, so, so it will wait that. But I love how this so how soft this is, and this is really weird yarn. It's DK weight, but it's knit it knits up to bulky weight gauge. So um, I used only five skeins of uh, 50 gram skeins for this. So this weights kind um, 250 grams. So it's light as air, and uh, and. You don't use that much yarn because you knit with a large gauge and it's still DK weight. So really interesting yarn. I'm kind of uh, waiting how it will turn out when I wear it. Will, it, uh, will the yarn hold uh, as good as it is? But I think so because it's blend of alpaca and cotton and they won't, they usually hold them quite well. Then this little shawl, it's called Filianen shawl and you might guess uh, from where it got its inspiration. It's from this uh, sweater that I'm wearing now that I published two days ago. This is called Filianen pullover. I have my microphone there so <laughs> that's why I have this plump there. Um, it got but bubbles and this got bubbles too. I could stand up and show it more clearly for you. It's <clears throat> round yoke, lace yoke pullover and now the sun is shining and I'm, I have to move a bit. <laughs> um, yeah, so this will be live in it's been tested at the moment, but I think I can publish it in the beginning of December, I think. So it will be a perfect Christmas gift if you want to make Christmas gifts. Then my work in progress is I have one um, Christmas gift knitting. I know the person who is getting this won't be watching my knitting podcasts. So, um, it's a beanie. I'm probably going to make a pattern of this, but I'm, it, will be, it will go to next fall because it's impossible for me to write it uh, before Christmas and photoshoot and everything. I won't get it finished now, so it will wait. Then I have this cropped cardigan here. My friend asked me to make a um, cardigan with waffle stitch pattern and uh, 
I was kind of have I I have been making um, I have been thinking of making a vowel stitch pattern of myself, and then I uh, tried out uh, different stitch patterns, and I I decided to go with a pattern like this, and um, it's V-neck cardigan. There will be patterns, but I haven't just yet decided what kind of buttons I'm going to use. My version is cropped, but since it's worked from the top down, you can work as long as you want. So I have one sleeve there and I'm going to make a longer sleeve, um, I think full length sleeve, and then I have another waiting. So it's really simple texture cardigan. Okay, those are my work in progresses and my finished objects that are going to be published later. Um, then a few words about my book and uh, the process uh, of the photo shooting. Um, this earlier this week we were we were photo shooting my book. It took two days. We were uh, in this beautiful place called Bolstad, uh, Bolstad Court. Um, in Rasepori, it's kind of one and a half hour drive uh, from here uh, by the coast, and um, it was amazing place. It was 200 years old uh, building or a house. Um, the family that lived there uh, welcomed us uh, to the photo shooting and. Uh, uh, there was this professional model, a stylist and a uh, makeup artist and uh, then Sini and Yonda who were photoshooting and um, some of the nits were photoshooted on me and some of the nits were photoshooted on the, on the professional model and um, it was amazing two days. It was... Uh, I was... Uh, amazed most by the stylist. Uh, she had shown the pictures of my of my um, of my knits <laughs> and uh, and then she chose the wardrobe for the uh, for the for the book or for the for my designs and um, I was <laughs> It was interesting to see that that I I, ha, I have had a picture in my head uh, that I want would want the book and the outfits and everything to be, and I was amazed how how she managed to kind of read from my designs what I wanted them to look like, what kind of outfits I wanted. With, with what kind of out, outfits I wanted them to be, and uh, and I wouldn't have be I wouldn't be able to choose the outfits for for myself. So I'm so happy how how um, kind of unified the wardrobe or the outfit um, outfits that she had chosen were and. Um, and I'm just waiting to see the finished result and the photographs. I have seen a few photographs, but of course they still have to be edited and everything. So I haven't seen much yet. And uh, the ones that I have seen are, are already on my Instagram. So if you want to see, you have to go there to watch them. So I'm so happy how, how it all turned out. And I'm going to put some... Um, some footage of the photo shooting days uh, here in the end of this video. So so enjoy of the, that footage. There isn't much because I wasn't able to uh, uh, shoot all the time. So please watch those too and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you for watching. Mm.